Hey guys, it's Brian from Team Aquascape and our channel is all about transforming outdoor living spaces with water features. Design and installation is who we are and building backyard dreams is what we do. Hey everybody, this is gonna be a super fun project, a little difficult. This is one of the hardest style ponds to build. It's not that the pond is any different. It's not even that big of a pond, nine by 14 feet. The challenge is this, it sits on a pretty severe slope, almost seven feet from the patio down towards the lake. And how do you put a pond in on such a severe slope? How do you still get a waterfall visible from inside the house? So we're gonna take you guys through all of that stuff. Small pond, difficult spot. Here we go. So just like always, all of our soil that we excavate goes to build up around that biofalls area there. We set the biofalls, we hook up that plumbing, and then we take all that soil and dig it out. Uh, marking out the shelves, we're just looking for, you know, some type of amoebic shape pond. Uh, just give it a lot of style, a lot of shape, nothing ordinary, because we don't do anything ordinary. So I always want those waterfalls facing towards the house or something visible from inside the house. And all those windows look out towards that lake. Um, to give us a waterfall that's about 12 inches tall, we're going to need to create a massive berm. And the reason the berm is so massive is because, again, that yard slopes away seven feet. So instead of bringing in more and more and more dirt, we're going to build a retaining wall. What we need to do is build a retaining wall that has more stone in it than almost half of the pond. So we've got about eight tons of boulders going in just to retain this soil to pull off a 12 inch high waterfall, which is kind of crazy. Now we can start rocking in that pond. You're gonna notice we pause right here. There's a fish cave down in the bottom. We're gonna put a fish cave in here because this pond backs up to a natural subdivision pond. And we've seen a lot of egrets, a lot of herons. So we just wanna give those fish a place to hide. It definitely makes them a little less stress and gives them a fighting chance. Those herons have a really, really hard time grabbing fish out of a two foot deep pond. So we're gonna continue to rock in the pond. The orange dots you guys see right now are used really as just kind of a reference mark for myself and the rest of the team. I like to put these down. These are going to be where some key boulders sit. I always put the orange dots where I put like big rocks, curves that I want to come in towards the pond. A lot of times you can get caught away with getting that necklace look and it's one of my pet peeves. So I put the orange dots down, we'll put some large boulders there. And then after we get those big rocks in, then we come fill in with some of the small rocks. Now we're getting one of my favorite parts, also a difficult part, hiding the skimmer box. So you look at the rock on the left side of the skimmer box. We want that rock just above the water level. The same with the rock on the right. If I can get those two rocks just above my water level, then I look for a bridge stone or a piece of driftwood or something that I can kind of bridge between the two of those without the bottom of that stone or wood or whatever I'm gonna use in there ever touching the water. If it touches the water, it'll actually stop debris from coming in. Breaking up the monotony with just a little bit of gravel so it's not rock, rock, rock all the way around. Little plant pockets here and there for different aquatics. We're constantly thinking how the customer is gonna use this pond later. Where can they put aquatics? Where do aquatics make the most sense? In this pond, most of the aquatic plants would be on the backside or more of that lakeside not blocking the view of the waterfall. This is a really important part. Notice how we used a piece of slate. Now, not always do we use a piece of slate. It's really kind of the easiest way to build a waterfall. You do your frame rock on the left, frame rock on the right, and then you just put a piece of slate in there, level it off, and you're gonna get a nice clean sheet of water. So the pond's done. Now we're moving up towards the waterfall. We convinced the homeowner to use a patio bowl. We're gonna take this patio bowl, turn it into a biological filter. It's a brand new product. We're playing with it here. Love the use of this bowl as a biological filter. It's gonna double the filtration for this size pond. So we're just kind of playing around with ideas on where we can put it. I love it just to the right of the biofalls, which is gonna be the main fall. It'll give the homeowners another vantage point. Notice that big piece of seam tape right through the center of the liner there. That's not because we ran short of liner. One of our pet peeves at uh, Team Aquascape is folds in the liner. So a lot of times we just take seam tape and seam down those folds. So rock and gravel never gets underneath there. That patio bowl is all set, the bio bowl, bowl. <laughs> getting some frame rocks in around the bowl, plus the waterfall. Things are really coming together at this point. We probably only have like another hour and a half to two hours left of work. We also brought in a giant tropical lily for our customers. Just one more hiding opportunities for those fish. Now this was a tropical lily that we had back at our store. 
I really like the addition of tropical water lilies in ponds because they get big in a hurry. You do have to treat it like an annual basket, meaning every year you're gonna have to throw it away in zones six or lower, but you treat it like buying an annual basket and every year you say, I'm gonna spend 100 bucks on a water lily and you'll get 10 times more flowers. The pads get 10 times bigger. Things are almost done here. We're just bringing in a little extra topsoil, dressing thing, things up. Look at the details on the biofalls here. This is how you properly hide a biofall. Everybody always asks us, is there a lid for the biofalls? And a big giant stone over the top of that thing would look ridiculous. Leaving that as a more of an upper pool looks so much better. You can see how we kind of worked the pond into that seven foot slope, built up a little bit on one side, took out a lot on the other side. At this point, we're just about done. We're gonna turn this thing on and then the rest is gonna be left to the landscapers. Wasco Nursery, I love working with them because they just know exactly what we're looking for with plant-wise and uh, they can be crazy creative. So they're gonna do a fantastic job with the plants, really help soften up that wall, really help hide that biofalls and take this thing to a whole nother level. Wasco knocked it out of the park again, did an incredible job with the landscape. I love working with them because they share the same vision we have. And when I talk about that, look at this waterfall. The waterfall is only about 12 inches high, but when they start putting the height, like that big north wind maple back there, behind it, a tulip tree, blocking out that white house over there, instantly this starts feeling bigger and bigger. So always plan on some height back behind your waterfall. And then you really focus on this. It's helping create a room and we really need to do that because in this backyard, literally you have like six football fields looking out over here. We want to make this look as intimate as possible. So I love the way this all turned out. Uh, you can see our potato vine that we planted up here in the top is starting to take off. Even the little impatient back in the biofall tray back there is working really well. They came in with a lot of ground cover, some lower growing stuff. I see some allium back over in there. This pond is going to be one of those that looks better and better year after year. And that's just this section. So let's take you on the tour through the entire project. We come over to here to an addition to the pond. This was never designed into the pond originally, but I think it adds so much. We've got this waterfall facing towards the house and it's not a very visible waterfall, meaning it gives us a lot more sound, not visibility, but this gives us a lot more visibility. That horse tail type fall, that veil fall that comes out of here gives us a lot more interest as people walk out of the back side of the house or even from his office or the family room over here. The other great addition to this thing is we've more than doubled the filtration on this pond. By adding this fountain bowl turned into a biological filter, we've really, really improved the filtration on this. There's a filter mat that sits down in here and on top of that, a bag of bio balls, just like the biological filter up in here. So all that water comes up through the bottom of this, through that filter mat and then through the bio balls. And then adding just like some potato vines, some impatience, you can decorate this the exact same way you've decorated some of your other ones. I think it's an easy, easy add-on to any pond. And more importantly, look at how much better this whole pool looks. So this was probably one of the more challenging parts. Every time we build a waterfall, I want to try to make it visible from inside the house. And so from here, it was really important to put a bigger stone here, which then push this angle kind of like that, and then put in the thinner stone on this side. If I reversed it and I took this big stone, put it over here, and this one over here, this waterfall, instead of facing this way, would have faced more like this making it completely invisible from inside the house. So we get a nice veil style fall. The reason we went with this veil st style fall is again because it's more visible. If I did bouncing around, it would give us a lot of sound, but not be as visible. We are really looking for the visibility of everything here. This drops down into a shallow area and then goes into our pond. And not a big pond, but a really nice pond. And I think more importantly, it fits to scale with the backyard. So one of the things we really try to work with uh, with our landscapers is trying to hide those edges. And right now you can see all the edges, but the way they planted it is for the future. My favorite ponds are the ones where I can't tell exactly where the water ends and where the land begins because plants are starting to creep in over the rocks. Now some of these areas, like these big guys that I'm standing on here, will never get hidden. And I know that, but I want them to try to hide them. So what'll happen back in here is they put in some of these flocks, these creeping flocks back in here 
This stuff will start growing over this edge. That'll tie in with our iris and some of the creeping jenny. This edge is just gonna look better and better over time. And then really highlighting these two big key boulders here. Remember in the beginning of the video or halfway through the video, we talked about the necessary placement of the big rocks. Big rocks should always go on towards the curves, like in towards the pond, small rocks on the curves that go away, accentuating those curves more and more and more. We got these big ones here, big ones back there, a couple big ones over there. All the small rocks should get hidden over time. Well, what an awesome project. Had so much fun building this. Uh, we don't always get to do projects of this size. Sometimes you do really, really big stuff. Every now and then it's great to get kind of back to our roots. Uh, what I loved about this one was the challenge of that slope, working on that severe slope, making that pond look like it's always just kind of fit there. Uh, always a lot of fun working with Wasco Nursery, bringing it uh, to its full potential with the landscape. Why don't you guys tell me what your favorite part is? You know what to do, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me your favorite part. See you next time. Bye.